My name is Adele. I'm a sports neurologist at the UCLA Brain Sport Program. Today's topic is a very hot button topic right now, I think, and it has been for the last couple of years. Uh, we'll be talking about concussion. Um, and we have on some great people on the show today. To my right, we got um, Dr. Chris Giza. He's the director of the UCLA Brain Sport Program, pediatric neurologist at UCLA as well. We have Earl Watford, what, nine year? veteran of so the far. NFL so yes. far. Uh, last stint was in Tampa Bay. Yes. Um, so Super Bowl champion to my left, <laughs> right? Yeah. You're going to be getting your ring soon? Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> They'll come nice. through on that promise, right? <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's great. So can you give us a little blurb on, you know, what a concussion is? Sure. I, I mean, I think, you know, the simplest way to think of a concussion is a brain movement injury. So your brain is floating in fluid inside the skull. And when your head accelerates or decelerates or hits something, or sometimes even if it doesn't hit something, but just moves quickly, the brain can move around inside there um, and a concussion could occur. Um, it's important to know that a concussion is a type of traumatic brain injury. So it's serious, okay? But it's also important to know what a concussion is not. A concussion is not bleeding in the brain, a bruise on the brain, a hole in the brain. So it's a uh, it's a recoverable type of brain injury in most cases. And I think that's also important to understand. So you mentioned there's no bleeding in the brain. Safe to say it's microstructural in nature? I think people use the term microstructural and also functional. Right. Think of it as computer software as opposed to like tearing out the hard drive, the computer's rebooting. Right. So in other words, if someone has a concussion, we do an MRI, we do a CAT scan, we're not going to see anything. Generally, you won't. Yeah, you won't. You won't see a any structural injury on a CAT scan, and outside of research MRIs, um, you're not going to find any findings on the MRI either. Yeah. And what are what are the, like some of the typical symptoms that you know happen in a concussion? That maybe if someone's wondering if they've had a concussion or not, what are some sort of symptoms to to be able to look out for? Yeah, that's a good question, and that's important for education for youth and athletes. Mm -hmm. You know, what are the common symptoms of concussion? Um, typically, you know, headache is the most common, uh, sometimes disorientation, dizziness, uh, nausea, vomiting, uh, sometimes memory problems can occur. Of course, people can be knocked unconscious, and then in most cases, that's obviously a concussion, okay? But uh, less than 10% of concussions actually require a loss of consciousness. So more often, 90% of the time, it's going to be headache, nausea, dizziness, balance problems, thinking problems, stuff like that. Yeah, I think the big uh, misconception sometimes that I run into with, with patients that come in or someone that's being assessed for a concussion, it's, you know, I didn't lose consciousness, so, you know, I didn't have a concussion, right? right? So um, I think that's really important because you know, being able to identify a concussion, then, you know, you start thinking about the things that need to be done if a possible concussion has taken place. So, yeah, another important point is that, you know, the, we, we do a lot of time teaching people what the symptoms are for concussion. Um, but you have to understand also that the person who has the concussion may not recognize it in themselves because of the concussion. And so that's why it's important to have athletic trainers. It's important to have teammates, to have your coaches, also educated to these things so they can look out for those signs and symptoms. Somebody who's disoriented might not raise their hand and say, hey, I think I have a concussion. They might just go back to, well, I've been trained to play. I'm going to go back into the next play. That's what I've been trained to do. Right. And especially when you're dealing with like a, um, a younger population, right? Like if you're talking about a 10 year old, right? But because young people still have concussions, right? Like mm -hmm. 10 year olds, you're a pediatric neurologist, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, pediatric population still has a concussion. So even in that population, self-recognition is probably, you know, a lot more difficult at times, sure. right? And yeah, absolutely. So it's really important probably to have that sort of um, monitoring system around them where you have the parents, the coaches, and, you know, that kind of support mm -hmm. system. Yeah. And it's much tougher, I think, at the youth level, you know, at the, at the collegiate level, at the professional level, I know we'll hear, but that, you know, they have a lot of medical staff, you have athletic right. trainers, a lot of education going on, um, you know, at, you know, your, your football plan down at the, the corner park or something like that. You may or may not even have any people really supervising. Yeah. Um, and you definitely won't often have medical personnel there. So um, it's more challenging for, for the youth, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 
I like to shift now. Do you just want to kind of tell us how you got involved in sports? I know that you were a multi-sport athlete in high mm -hmm. school, right? Like yes. you were dropping bombs in baseball <laughs> from what I hear. So, um, you know, can you kind of tell us how you got involved and then how, you know, eventually you got into football and then how you got into college and so on and so forth? Yeah. Uh, growing up in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, uh, play mainly most of my sports unorganized you know i wasn't on a team kind of just doing it in the streets football uh, just playing around with tennis balls and sticks you know uh but always been a fan of the sports especially philly sports everything mm -hmm. um, from hockey baseball golf uh eventually growing up and needing an a chance to get to college uh i chose to play baseball and football mm -hmm. leaning towards more football uh to make my way uh playing well got a few scholarship offers and wound up going to james madison university which has was a an amazing experience uh which got me to the nfl today um you know i think playing a lot of sports different sports uh really you know helped me in many ways whether it's uh uh trying to uh, grow up, you know, I, I kind of spent most of my time by myself as a young, uh, I have older brothers, but they were, uh, they're a lot older than I am. So mm -hmm. teaching myself how to do a lot of things and relying on coaches and uh, other teammates to, you know, build that your self-esteem and uh, learning how to uh, be a part of a team, which is probably the biggest thing when it comes to uh, youth sports and being in high school and stuff like and that. And that's, that's great, right? Because we were literally just talking about this, like right before we, we got on and like the concussion issue, it's a big issue, right? Obviously it's a big issue, right? The, the possible sort of results of repeated concussions, that's a big issue, right? Admittedly, but at the same time, we need to, um, give credit to what sports can do for people, yes. right? And I think that one big thing that that we harp on at the brain sport program is the possibility of sports providing that sort of psychological resilience, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we like calling it. And to teaching discipline, psychological resilience. And then, you know, if, if sports don't carry you to the NFL, like it did you, right? The experience and the discipline that you build in sport carries you to other places in your life, yes. right? Um, so I'm I'm glad that you mentioned that. So when when did you actually start playing sports? Was it like Pee Wee or was it high like straight into high school? I remember I was playing baseball with the Philly Rookie League when I lived in Southwest Philly. So I did that for a couple years. Uh I've always had a love for baseball. Uh, I did that for a couple years and then I didn't wind up playing sports again until high school, my junior year when I played baseball and started playing football again. Mm. Uh, you know, that was I feel like I, I waited a long time to do that, but I can't, I have no regrets when it comes to uh, playing sports later than earlier. Right. You know, a lot of people were hurt. I watched people get injured, concussions, any head trauma. Right. I just, you know, it's a tough place to grow up anyway. And that's kind of the outlet to uh, stay out of trouble. Right. So that was a big part of getting into sports and finding a way out of Philly into, you know, a better place for myself, uh, whether it's professionally in sports or any other profession. Mm -hmm. uh, I think everyone should have a plan when it comes to uh, not just sports. I don't think you should go to college just because you want to make it to a professional in any sport. Uh, I think you should try and get that degree and or trade. You know, I'm not going to push that on anyone. I think that is just a way to better yourself and you know make a way for yourself and making a, a living and you know so i think that's probably the biggest thing you know I, I i think that was a big part in making the decision to further my you know myself and trying to make a living right so and that's another thing right like it, it takes people that maybe out of a situation where college was not an option yes. to it becoming like an option not only at one college but like several colleges yeah. and like top tier colleges mm -hmm. right like you know you were a multi-sport athlete mm -hmm. right and i think one of the things we talk about a lot in youth sports is people overtraining. you mentioned you know that there were other folks who you played with 
who had been in the sport for a long time and mm-hmm. had to sort of step out because of injuries. And so could you talk a little bit about maybe what were the advantages for you of being able to play multiple sports? And then eventually, obviously, you settled on football, but, yeah. you know, you were you were experiencing a lot of different kind of physical activity to start with. Yeah, playing different sports and just learning about your body, especially that young. Right. The more you do, you can see what you can do, what you're capable of. And I think that is probably the biggest thing when it comes to playing more than one sport. Uh, besides meeting new people and making new friendships, uh, you, you learn the sports, you know, you can pass down if you, when you have children as well, mm-hmm. you, you always think you're the best at that sport anyway. Uh, but I think it's good to just learn your body and how it affects you, whether you get injured or not. Uh, I think that helps. So. Like it's the, almost like cross training a little bit, maybe yeah. like you don't get an overuse and, you know, like we think about, especially in baseball, mm-hmm. right? There's pitchers and stuff like that. Yeah. And, um, so you can avoid some of those things by doing multiple sports. I think that's, a, that's a important yeah. lesson for a lot of young kids out there. Absolutely. And I really liked what you said where it's like, I can realize what I'm capable of, mm-hmm. right? Like that's such a, like y- you said it maybe in passing a little bit, but yeah. like, if you think about that, like being able to realize through sport that you're you're like capable of accomplishing Mm -hmm. something you know what i mean like that's really big right like that builds your self-esteem absolutely right and i think that a big issue right now with a with a lot of younger people is an issue with self-esteem right Mm -hmm. and that kind of leads to a lot of the other sort of psychological comorbidities but you're saying you know, I'm, I'm able to realize what I'm capable of doing, that if I work hard enough, I can accomplish something mm-hmm. that I can work. If I work with people, right, I can accomplish something. Yes. I got such a cool feeling. You know, and, I was I was right. having a conversation uh, a few days ago uh, with another parent. Was, she was saying how her son uh, just started playing football, tackle football. Yeah. I mean, he loves it. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, as a parent, you, you're like, oh, hold up. Yeah. I don't know if, if I'm ready for this. Right. Uh, but it, it was it was cool to see. And talk about it because she was like, I didn't expect him to feel that way or be that way. He comes home, he's, he's he banged up, bruised up, but he loves it. You so know? hold on. So you're saying before football, she saw him as this kind, maybe like a shy kid or something or like that? Her, or, her baby boy, you know? But then you, you put pads on him, you put him on the field, and then like he, he just blossomed. Yes. Like, you like, know, and that, that's not always the case. You know, of course, you have the, the another type of parent where you're going to do this, mm-hmm. uh, which that seems like to be another right, right, issue in itself right. uh pushing kids to do something yeah. again not comfortable with yeah. or they you know don't want to do i never had a parent my my parents did not do that to right, me right. you know i wasn't pushed to play a sport or right. you know run track or play football play baseball do what you like to do yeah, find what good. you are good at yeah. and do that yeah. you know the best you can and and i think me personally i think that is probably the biggest and most effective way to you know, get kids out. You know, a lot of kids are stuck in the house on tablets or computers, so or on their cell phone. So I feel as though you want to just you got to find uh, something to do that right. you, you're good at and do it the best of your ability. Right. You know, if you like sports, you interested in it, try it. Don't quit. You know, don't quit on it. Right. And just do it in high school. So you know, you're talking about you didn't have really a lot of external pressures to playing mm-hmm. in high school, right? Did you have any internal pressures to play in high school? Get to college, really, really, go. that was it, yeah. you know. And uh, again, lucky enough, you know, I had scholarships academically. I did not have to play sports. Yeah, uh, that was again oh, a you, decision. You had academic scholarships, yes, as okay. well. So I could have gone to school for either. I didn't have to play sports, but it's something I loved so much. Right. I wanted to continue to do. Right. You know, not even thinking twice about making it to the next level yeah. well, I'm getting, to, I'm going to college for, right. you know, education and I can do something with this, yeah. you know, at, on my way. Tell us about the general feeling when you were in high school, right? Which was like, sorry Seems to say, like forever sorry ago. to say, bro, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it was years ago. Yeah. It was a lot of years ago. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, tell us about the, the general sense of concussion in high school like in that environment that you were in was it was it something that you it's, were told hey look out for this yeah anything like that you know you as coaches and players it's all about safety mm-hmm. as you know as best you can especially in football mm-hmm. um, you do the best you can 
and try to tackle the right way. But that young, you're throwing yourself around most right, of the time. Right. Um, con concussions and head trauma wasn't really a thing, right. you know, back they, then. Especially, no one right? talked about it. Yeah. No one. There was no one watching for it. Right. You know, you you get a little woozy. You get up and you go, "I'm good. I'm okay. I'm okay." And you go back out there, or you don't get back up. You know, right. we gotta you know figure right. something out. Right. But for the most part, that wasn't a, a focus. You know, and I until recent history. You yeah. know, like yeah. the last yeah, few man. years, it's, yeah, totally. it's never been. No one has talked about it. No yeah. one wants to talk about it. Right. You know, because especially as an athlete, you want to be out there. Right. You, know, you want to play. You want to. So that's what I'm trying to tie into, right? It's like so no one was really telling you much about it, mm -hmm. right? You have this internal pressure about going to college, but maybe it wasn't that yeah, that significant because you had academic options, mm -hmm. right? But you really wanted to play in college, oh, yeah. right? Um, so was there ever that sort of internal pressure to drive you to, you know, if you're feeling some kind of way um, after, you know, getting your bell rung, mm -hmm. right? Which is a term that I I think I see a lot thrown around, right? <laughs> yeah, I got my bell yeah. wrong, right? Yeah. It's a stinger, like I'm I'm fine. Yeah. Right. Um, anything that sort of pushed you past just like maybe you're having symptoms afterwards, some weird symptoms that you're just like, I'll I'll deal with it. I'll yeah, I'm push. okay. You're okay. Yeah. You're always yeah. gonna be okay. Especially, yeah. you know, a lot of people, they wanna get to the next level. They exactly. wanna get to that top level. Right. And you will not tell a kid he can't play football, you know, or right. any sport. Right. They can be cheerleading, which is probably the most dangerous one. Right. Uh, but you you get a kid and tell him he can't play, he has to miss a game. Well, you you hurt my chances. You right. Know? Mm -hmm. right. I have to get out of the game. I have to sit because well, I feel fine. Yeah. You know, they may or may not feel fine. You know that better than anyone, you mm -hmm. know. So they may not have symptoms. They may have symptoms, but we see it. You know, teammates right. see it, mm -hmm. coaches right. see it, and everyone wants the best for you. But yeah, you know, you're always gonna do what you want to do right. when you're trying to when you set that goal, that path for yourself. Uh, you want to make it. You're not trying to come out, right? You know, Earl, you really get to you know. And when I when I was young, now I grew up on a farm, so we didn't have organized football mm -hmm. teams or stuff. But you know, you could still fall off of animals cows oh, yeah. generally aren't meant to be ridden you know and things like that but there you know again there's no discussion of concussion or getting you know you get your bell rung because you fell off an animal or got kicked you just do what you do you yeah. go back to work you throw the hay around you do stuff like that um i think there's been a big move you know certainly in the last 10 years maybe probably not as much before that um of trying to change the culture a little bit around this and I don't know um, if you have any experiences, you, you know, as you've watched football over that time period, um, have you seen that there's been a, a change in the way that we talk about these things to the young athletes? Absolutely. Like now they, um, do they look out more for each other, you know? And if you're a young athlete, you know, one of the things we always wonder is like, when I'm trying to tell a young athlete, you know, be careful about your head, don't get a concussion. You know, the last thing, a teenager wants to hear is some guy in a white coat telling him what to do. <laughs> yeah. You know, who do, who do the youth athletes really listen to and, and where, what's the best way we can get the message to them uh, to, you know, to play safe. Yeah. I, I believe uh, the, the teammates, mm -hmm. I mean, even at, at the pros, we're looking, we have spotters, you know, right. there yeah. are people watching out, but at the same time, we have to be self-conscious and our teammates have to look out for us as well because they see something. Oh, come on, let's let's get you off the field. Let's get you. You know, mm -hmm. we we know we, everyone knows what a concussion looks like, especially now, uh, whether it's minor or severe. You know, and for a teammate to try and push you out there to keep playing after something like that is not good. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think uh, coaches should, especially in high school. You know, listen to the other players as well. If they see something, it, it, everyone's got to work together when it comes to this because right. it may be nothing. It may become something uh, later on. So for players to hold each other accountable, we talked about that earlier, accountability, they must say something, you know, mm -hmm. get the guy off the field. You know, it, it's only going to get worse. You know, it's not going to get any better if him continuing to play. 
So if you can, if you're watching, you see it, do something, help the guy off the field and, you know, don't make things. That's, that's a real team message, you know, yeah, absolutely beyond just the team playing together mm -hmm. to score a touchdown or to, to stop, uh, stop the opposing team from scoring, but actually looking out for your, the well being of your teammates. That's, that's yeah. health, you know, that, yeah. that you can, it can be very serious, you know, that can become something no one wants to see. You know? Right. Um, and I think um, that there's other reasons for, like, if you've had a concussion or if you think that you've had a concussion, mm -hmm. right? There's other reasons to, like, step out, right? Like, obviously, you don't want to play in a, with, on, with a concussion, but, like, why is that, right? So you have second impact syndrome, right, which mm -hmm. is, is pretty rare, doesn't happen right. very commonly, right? But it, it is out there, right? Mm -hmm. but it's terrible, it, yeah. yeah. It's, and it's awful and it's devastating and, you know, it can basically ruin someone's life. But in addition to that, right, um, if you play with a concussion, um, you've been shown to have an increased risk of lower extremity injury, right? So if you're out there, you're playing with a concussion, you know, high ankle sprain, right? Um, uh, ligament tear in the knee is, a, is, you know, you're two times increased risk of that happening to you, right? So in something that, maybe you would have had to sit out like a week right now if you also get you know a high ankle sprain or something orthopedic you know you're looking at what possible surgery right like you never know something yeah. that can really sit you out for the rest of the season right and then um you know in addition to that your performance goes down right yeah. like if <laughs> if you've had a concussion right your performance is going to go down if there's scouts there if people are watching right like they're going to see you kind of messing up a little yeah. bit because you had a concussion and on top of that, your you know your team suffers, right? We're talking about team and yeah. the importance of team and that kind of feel, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you get out there and you know basically you're not going to be as good as yeah. you know without a concussion, so your team's going to suffer. It's a, it's a right? difficult decision, yeah. yeah. And yourself when yeah. oh, I got scouts out there watching me, I can't, right? I can't miss my, my right. opportunity. So, you know? so that's the thing. That's a great point, you know, right? So. It's very difficult. The scouts are out there and they're only out there for this game, right? You're taking the chance, like, I'm just going to go out there and try, even if I have a concussion, yeah. right? Like, I like I totally understand that perspective, right? Because I played baseball and when the scouts were out there, oh, FSU's out there and, and UM's out there. Oh, my gosh. You yeah. know, like, just the feel of it, of trying to perform your best. So I can definitely um, understand that perspective. That's for sure. Yeah. Did you all get any um, baseline concussion testing in high school or no? Mm -hmm. No, you know where they I do didn't. like a neurological I think, exam. I think college was the first time Call they did something like that at JMU. Yeah, yeah. The NFL, it's huge. Yeah, like that's the now first thing you do. Around. Yeah, that's right. the first thing right. you do. Right. If you're there for a physical, we're we're going you to go. Like, test. Oh man, <laughs> like every year you're like, man, I got to do this again. Yeah, <laughs> but it's it's good. It's, yeah, you know, you see it. It's helping. Right. Why is that important? Um from your perspective like doing I the think, baseline testing i think i mean it it's interesting because i think the the pendulum on preseason testing has swung a little bit you know there was a time period where um there was a big push that everybody should get pretty complicated preseason mm -hmm. testing that involves computers yep. and you know all these different type of devices and i think what we're learning now is it is important to have some preseason information just like you would get a cardiac you know physical like the doctor would listen to your heart or mm -hmm. he'd check your bones and joints um there should be some assessment of the neurological system but i think what we're learning is that <clears throat> certainly for the youth levels it doesn't have to be as sophisticated with all the bells and whistles um that you'd have at the higher levels uh and in fact you don't want it to be quite so complicated because what ends up happening is you, you know we talk a lot during coronavirus about disparities but there's a big disparity between you know the private school that mm -hmm. can afford like a computer lab mm -hmm. and a bunch yeah. of expensive equipment and you know the inner city school that doesn't have that kind of uh resources you know probably the greatest equalizer first is to have an athletic trainer you got a contact sport on campus you should have an athletic trainer. Yes. And then those trainers, um, you know, we all learn, like, you know, we call it the SCAT, the sport concussion yeah. assessment tool, is kind of a, a brief clinical exam. Like, like if you would see the doctor, he would check your symptoms and he'd, you know, check your reaction time and your memory and a few things like that, check your balance. balance. And they can do a lot of that stuff without a computer if you had a trainer. Mm -hmm. And yeah. most trainers know these kind of things. And so... Um, I hope as we go forward, particularly for you sports, that we see we see a little more of that. Yeah. Is, yeah. So you find that the 
that there is a lack of athletic trainers servicing um, high schools in lower socioeconomic dem demographics? Yes. Absolutely. I mean, here in Los Angeles, you know, a couple years ago, we were inquiring in the public school system, and there were between 80 and 90 public schools that had, um, that had tackle football as a sport, and there were only five or six schools that actually had trainers at that level. Now, private schools sometimes, you know, might even, look like, might even look like the league. Yeah, you know, they have right. multiple they trainers for different sports yeah. and sure, stuff. I'm sure yeah. there's a high, high school football in Texas. I'm sure yeah. there's yeah. a lot of yeah. these yeah. so stadiums some, out some there. Of, yeah, yeah, some of them yeah. have, have a lot of resources. But, you know, where most kids are playing, it's not like that. You yeah. know, it's not, it's not with really deep pockets. And uh, it's important then to make sure that, you know, we have to prioritize what we think is, you know, what, what do we think is important as a society? Well, I think sports are important as a society for our kids, sure. but um, we have to give the schools the budget that they can afford to have an athletic trainer. It should right. be like having a school nurse. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. that, that should be, that should be important. Some of these big schools, you know, you definitely need that kind of personnel. You did know? you, did you um, have sort of read, read, readily accessible athletic trainers to you in we high school? We would have a guy pop up that was at Temple. He would come oh, okay. and tape ankles and yeah. be there. And mm -hmm. of course we had medical at the end of the, right. the field, right. but right. no, nah, I mean, you were, you just kind of just play and yeah. mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> go home afterwards. Yeah. Right. That was, there was no one really there to, if something happened, well, we'll check it out afterwards. Right. But, right. What about the equipment from, from high school to college to NFL? When I was in high school, you're on your own. I mean, what they provided right? a helmet, and right. pads, and jerseys, but so that's what I want. To, that's what I want to know about. Like, let, all right, so we're talking about head trauma, right? So obviously, the the helmet. Back like, then, did you ever find that the helmet was like more cushiony as you moved up? Was there more, you know, customization or something like that? Now they have custom helmets in the league. Okay. I know a lot of guys that use those, they love them. Yeah, I do not. I have a pretty good helmet. I like it. I don't know the name of it, but yeah. I've used it for the last few years, and it's been awesome. Cool. Uh, but yeah, uh, high school, it's what's there is there. College, they they send it all in every year and get it all tested and make sure everything's proper the right way. So the quality's better from, the quality from college is, to high yeah, school. Yeah. And new then and NFL's at like the top. Yeah, yeah. They won't let you wear certain things. Right. You know, right. If, it, if they're like, oh, this is going to, we can't wear this helmet anymore. Right. You know, that's done with. You got to find a new helmet. So what do you think about that um, in terms of like helmet quality yeah, right, mean, and how it relates to concussion and, and head trauma? I, well, I mean, I, you know, I've heard other people say, you know, a helmet will be part of the solution for mm -hmm. concussions, yeah. but it won't be the solution yeah, because no. you can't stop your head from moving. Yeah. Right. Um, but you really bring up a, 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 you know, a very good point for the younger athletes. You know, again, we talk about wanting the kids to have the uh, advantage the the benefits of play, playing in sport, mm -hmm. but we have to sort of put the money, put our money where the mouth yeah. our mouth is, right? And so if we make them use hand me down equipment that's never refurbished or doesn't like, what if it just doesn't fit it, properly? Yeah. Then that's also dangerous, yeah. right? And so I think again, there should be some minimum standards, at, you know, at the youth level, because it sounds like you know, it sounds like once you get to to college and further up, obviously your equipment's yeah. getting better and better. Um, but if we want younger kids to participate, we want to make sure that um, simple things, you know, that the equipment's checked mm -hmm. periodically, you know, yeah. at least every few years it should be checked maybe, that the fit is proper, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes, you know, I mean, in the movies and what you see, the little scrawny guy <laughs> yeah. with the helmet that barely fits <laughs> right, on his right, head, right? right? You don't want to have that kind of thing going yeah. on because it's not really helping you. Um, but it's, you know, so some of the some of the really cool high tech solutions at the high level, right, where there's a where it's a business mm -hmm. and where it's people's jobs, right? Obviously, that's not necessary at the youth level. No. There's the sim the solutions at the youth level may be much simpler, yeah. um, but I think it's important that you know we talk about those things and that we again as a society decide that we want we want our kids to have these opportunities to play sports. We should try to make sure that you know, that they do have access to trainers, that they have some minimum standard for equipment. Mm -hmm. You know, I think there has to be, you know, the coaches have to um, have some education, right? If, yes. if the coach isn't educated about concussions, then uh, at the youth level, 
that's that's where the kids mostly learn, right? Yeah. Right. They don't they don't they right. don't have like some formal concussion class or Absolutely. thing. So I hate to uh, like translate from one sport to another, but I think we talked about this this uh, survey that they put out for like MMA fighters, and uh, I think it was MMA. I think it was Muay Thai something like that and um they asked them they asked them a bunch of questions regarding concussion but one of them was um one of them was who do you get your concussion information from like what person do you get your concussion information from and then it was it was your coach right all of like i don't not all of them but most of them got their information from the coach wow. right and then so then they tested the coach's knowledge on concussion right and um let's just say it it wasn't very good, mm -hmm. right? So you've got the fighters that are getting their information from the coach, but the coach, as per the test, right, isn't doesn't really right. know that much on concussion, um, which is interesting. So, I mean, I don't think that there's necessarily been a study that I can rack my brain for for football, but, you know, that kind of just tells you the dynamic between, you know, your, your athlete and your coach, right? Like, that's probably how it's working in most sports, Absolutely. in most sports scenarios, so. But that's a great, you know, segue or a great role for the tr athletic trainer because, right. you know, at the youth level, the coach has to kind of do everything, yeah. right? They're the equipment manager, they're the coach, mm -hmm. they're sort of the adult supervision, they're maybe the medical person, at least a little bit, a right? on their plate. Yeah. yeah. So they have to yeah. do all that. So, so they need to know a little bit. When you get up to a higher level, right, then I don't know how important is what the coach, and the coach obviously wouldn't need to know all the medical stuff at the higher level, yeah. but, um, do you know, do you get the experience that you know some coaches are really eyes wide open about injuries and other coaches are kind of more old school and say i'll oh, just tough it out put some dirt on that and get back in there in the, the nfl is not like that yeah. you know the not co like coaches, coaches they're more are, wide open the coaches are coaching mm -hmm. you know oh. there are so many people out there yeah. Yeah, watching yeah. you know what's going on as soon as someone falls wrong right they're Oh, that next snap, they're, you know, they're they're watching, they're looking, they're, right. they will come and get you. You see people getting their helmets taken away. Right. I'm okay, I'm okay. They're walking around angry, yeah. you know, you know, performance based. You know, this is that's money out of people's pockets when they're right. out on the field. So that is another. That's yeah. another. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'll tell you what. Um, that uh, so Patrick Mahomes received that concussion against the Cleveland Browns this past playoff, mm -hmm. right? And um. I thought they did a really good job. Honestly, I personally thought that they did, right? Like he he fell, right? It wasn't a very typical sort of head-to-head -head collision, right? But he kind of fell weird. I think you know, he got pulled down, they wrapped his, the other guy's arm got wrapped around his neck and he kind of on the replay you can see it, he falls direct on the on the crown straight into the ground. But then he got up and, you know, he was kind of stumbling a little bit and I think they immediately pulled him out he went under again i don't know the exact details but he didn't return in the game right and then he underwent the the entire protocol over a week time period so you know i thought you know that's everything why. worked out excellent in that case right um that's why the professionals are out there right mm -hmm. exactly you know and i think that's huge but again you know we talk about college and high school we don't have that right. Right there down there you know yeah we're fortunate enough because well it's, it's more of a business yeah you know uh, you got to protect investments. Uh, so, but that's a tough call. It's right? a very like you, tough call. You got, it's a, it's a you tough got Patrick call. Mahomes, like you know, might be one of the greatest quarterbacks moving forward. Of course, playoff game. I don't know the score, you know, but the fact that he was scrambling out to the right probably tells you that it was probably a close game if he's if the close. guy's scrambling, right? Yeah. So, um, that was a. I mean, you know, that must have been a hard call. It's I know you you've had to make. I think you you had to pull out a, a UCLA football player you were telling me about some time ago, day of the game. I don't know if it was related right. to. It wasn't to, something that happened right right there in front of me. I right. had, but but we were in right. the process of you know doing some evaluation and, right. and we had some things that we had to answer medically. Right. And I think that's you know that's always the the challenge. I mean that's also the reason why having the medical staff and the coaching staff as two separate. Mm -hmm. entities is helpful because um then the medical staff it's really clear what their priority is right. it's the health of right. the health of the athlete yeah. you know there are certainly you know and and the nfl um is under a microscope you know because it's 
being watched by so many people. So even so, it's great when the protocol works the way it's supposed to. Right. And, but there's also the time when it doesn't yeah. work, and yeah. everybody sees yeah. it. Yeah. And so um, that's the challenge of trying to practice under that. But I think the medical team's goal is always to make sure that you know you err on the side of being cautious. We right. you know we say when in doubt, you know sit them out. Yeah. You know and give the person a chance to recover or a chance that you can do a little more testing yeah. and be more sure if they've had an in injury or not. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think from, um, you know, from the video you were talking about um, with Mahomes, I think, you know, there's a couple of interesting points that you could illustrate from, you know, from that, that injury. And, and I think one of them is um, it looked initially like he was going to get a helmet to helmet, but then it was more of like a helmet to shoulder and kind of wrapped right. up and they tumbled right. down like you were describing. Right. And I think, you know, there's... Just like there is a myth that you have to be knocked out to have a concussion, yeah. there's sort of the myth that your head has to hit something to no. get a concussion. Yeah. And, so, and sometimes, for sure, it does. But sometimes just if your head gets whipped, mm -hmm. you know, and your, and your brain, remember I said, is kind of moving inside the skull. If, it, if your head gets whipped fast enough, even if it doesn't end up hitting something at the end, that could potentially cause an injury, cause a concussive type injury. And I think the other thing we can learn from, from that video is while maybe the hit didn't look so slam dunk that mm -hmm. it was obvious it very clearly when he gets up right he sort of staggers you know and his rubber legged and slow. you know he, yeah he was slow to get yeah. up and this right? is a guy who knows how to get up yeah. right yeah. so um when you see those type of observable things maybe he got the wind knocked out of him right. maybe he had a concussion right. but right. you can't risk it yeah. and leave him in there to you to get him out there that's and that's why you, go, you go to the tent yeah that's such a good point yeah. that's it, such a know? good point because yeah. It like you said, it didn't. Right. It wasn't a hard hit, right? Not necessarily it's a hard hit, know. relatively, yeah. right? I'm sure it would be a hard hit if if I was him, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But um, just the fact of how he got up, that always, from a medical perspective, you want to talk medical terminology, that always has to be in the differential as to why he's exhibiting the symptoms that he's exhibiting at that time. And you know, they always talk about being armchair general. Well, you know, being an armchair doctor, you know, you sit back here and you try to analyze these things oh, after right, they right. happen. When yeah. we got the video, I mean. The reality is yeah. if you're not there on the sideline, you don't know all the right. things, you know, that's yeah. a, that's a tough job, but I think it's important that, um, you know, that they have adequate time to do a proper assessment and then they can make a conclusion. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I try not to second guess what I see on the TV yeah. cause I don't actually get to examine that person. Unless, you unless you're forced to, um, by someone on a podcast on, in front of cameras. <laughs> <laughs> No, but, but I think it's, you know, but it's, we can still learn from those sort of yeah. things. And, and we realize that there's a lot of, there are a lot of moving parts. It's a complicated injury. Things that look like injury sometimes aren't. aren't. And sometimes things that don't look like much turn into, you know, a real problem for that person. And so. that's, and that was Patrick Mahomes, quarterback, playoff. He has the ball. He gets tackled, right? So all the eyes are on him at that time, mm -hmm. right? So that just leads me to wonder, you know, what about the guys off the ball? Right. Mm -hmm. What about the guys blocking, for example? Right. Guys that don't have all the eyes on them. Um, is there a possibility that that would happen to them, but then they would kind of stagger back and then make, make their way back to the huddle? What do you think? In the trenches, the trenches, mm -hmm. you know, it's a lot going on in there. Yeah. And let me tell you, you'll shake it off and keep going. Yeah. You know, no one's getting out. Yeah. So I've seen a moment like that. Well, the eyes aren't always on right. you know, the line. Yeah. Or, you know someone blocking on the edge right you know there are refs out there but they're not I, I'm, I'm, are the refs aren't involved in like <laughs> no, in no, that right like they have all. a lot and that's they're the looking thing, at right? something completely different yeah mm -hmm. man like the the coach right like the coach has to coach right yeah. players have to play players have to remember like what's going you on know, even I'm, that's what i'm thinking even you know? even with so many people out there looking just for that you, you know right. catching someone someone's head right. going the wrong way or getting helmet to helmet right. but well, that, that that's the it thing still man gets like missed you know it, you miss it sometimes that's the thing it doesn't have to be a helmet to helmet right exactly. as yeah. illustrated by the mahomes yeah, exactly. thing right it's like it that doesn't have to be the case right so you, that's not necessarily what you're looking out for obviously you're looking out for that but in addition to that it's like these like symptoms afterwards that you can have a concussion right like if you stumble a little bit but like at the same time, it's like people are stumbling on the football field all the time, right? Always. Like people, people are getting hit. So yeah. it, I mean, it's it's complicated. Yeah, right? I think very, that, that's very. the point that's trying to be made. It's like it's, and football's you know, got a lot of players. Yeah, too, right? right. I mean, because right. you know, to compared at. to most other sports, there's more people. 
you know, playing at that moment. You know, yeah. you got 22 people running around right. there at any given moment. So keeping eyes on everybody it's, is it's, hard. It's yeah. so difficult. Yeah. And something as fast as that, right? Mm -hmm. Something as, I guess yeah. the, the, the positive side of that is that there's like a lot of a stoppage in right. football, right? So you have play, stop. Right. Maybe you can, you know, keep an eye on all the players at that time. Play, stop, play, stop, play, stop. Right. Versus another sport like soccer, right? Like right. soccer, you're just like, you're going for what, 45 minutes plus extra time. What is your experience uh, with concussion? Have you ever been diagnosed with a concussion before? Never. You've never been diagnosed with a concussion? No. Okay. Um, have you ever had a concussion? Yes. Yes. <laughs>